Hello everyone. Welcome back to this series called Finance Current Affairs where we pick up some important financial topics and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number 1, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever a new video comes up. You can also join our Telegram group. The link is in the description below. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions, they will be provided to you through this very group only. So moving on to the first question now which says according to the RBI draft master direction on prudential regulation for the all india financial institutions that proposed implementing basel 3 framework to these institutions what is the minimum capital ratio requirement including the capital conservation buffer so recently rbi has released these draft directions which should be applicable for the all india financial institutions the suggestions are invited and soon uh, after the proposal after the comments are invited and the decision is taken soon the proper regulations will also be out so what this set of directions say they talk about implementing the basel 3 framework on these all india financial institutions so according to that basel 3 framework how much is the minimum capital ratio which these Uh, all India financial institutions need to maintain. So let's discuss about this very draft regulations, and then we'll come back to the question. So as mentioned recently, the draft master directions are out, okay, which relate to your all India financial institutions. So what is there in this set of directions? It talks about some instructions on the exposure norms, on the classification, valuation, operation of the investment portfolios of these. Uh, institutions the resource raising norms which will be applicable to these institutions what we are going to discuss today we are going to discuss uh, that what this set of master directions has to say about application of the basel norms to your basel 3 norms to these institutions okay so these directions will be applicable to four all india financial institutions char all india financial institutions mein directions applicable hai jiske according basel 3 framework ab follow karna hoga so wo char institutions kaun si hai they include your exim bank nabard national housing bank and the small industries development bank of india so exim bank nabard nhb and sidbi are the all india financial institutions on whom this set of directions will be applicable so what do you mean by basel 3 norms see we have discussed about basel norms various times that they are the international regulations that are issued by the committee called basel committee on banking supervision so these norms often referred to as the accords are basically the guidelines which your banks which your financial institutions they should follow in order to enhance the overall um financial system resilience okay in order to make them more stronger to deal with the risks in a better manner there might be various periods of crises of stressful situations when these institutions these banks might face problems so before hand only you should create certain provisions you should maintain certain capital all this is recommended by the basel norms so basel is basically a set of guidelines focusing on the risks to the banks and they focus on strengthening the micro prudential regulation in order to raise the resilience of these institutions in periods of stress so these norms say that you should maintain this much of the capital ratio so that that capital will be useful for you in times of stress pehle hi kuch capital as a buffer maintain karke chalo taki problems ke time pe losses ke time pe crisis ke time pe wo paisa aap use kar pao so this is what the basel recommends basel committee recommends so what are the uh, regulatory requirements which will be applicable on all india financial institutions as far as the basel three norms are concerned so according to that these ratios need to be maintained by these all india financial institutions banks already are following these norms now these four all india financial institutions also have to adhere to them ye rules hamare banks pe bhi applicable hain aur ab inhe in firms pe bhi apply karne ka ek proposal laya hai so what is the requirement the requirement is that minimum common equity tier 1 ratio needs to be maintained at 5% of the risk weighted as 5.5% of the risk weighted assets other than that the capital conservation buffer is also to be maintained uh, which is about 2.5% of the risk weighted asset then minimum common equity tier 
plus your capital conservation comes out to be 8%. And additionally, tier 1 capital needs to be maintained, minimum uh, total capital ratio after adding the tier 2 capital which is to be maintained at 2% comes out to be 9% overall. So the minimum total capital requirement is this 9% plus 2.5% of the capital conservation buffer which comes out to be 11.5% of the risk weighted asset. Now you might be wondering what is this tier 1, tier 2 capital conservation buffer. So let me discuss that very briefly as well. Tier 1 ratio or the tier 1 capital includes the core capital of the bank and tier 2 capital includes the other supplementary capital. So tier 1 mein jo bank ki core capital hai jis mein unki paid up share capital ho jati hai, share premium hai, statutory reserves hai, baaki disclosed reserves hai, un sab ka total hota hai tier 1 capital. Tier 2 mein isko supplement karne wali capital jo baaki undisclosed reserves hai ya koi general provisions create kiye gaye hai, koi counter cyclical provisioning hai, koi hybrid financial products hai, redeemable cumulative, uh, preference shares hai, debt capital instruments hai, wo sari jo capital hai, wo tier 2 mein aajati hai. So tier 1 comprises of the core capital, the paid up share capital, disclosed reserves, share premium, statutory reserves. Tier 2 comprises of your supplementary capital like the investment reserves, the counter cyclical provisioning, debt capital instruments, preference uh, shares which are basically redeemable. Okay, then uh, to tier 1, other than the basic tier 1 capital, some additional tier 1 capital is also to be maintained in the form of perpetual non-convertible preference shares and perpetual debt instruments along with this fair premium on them. So what all types of capital needs to be maintained? What is the further bifurcation? This has been told over here. Now talking about the capital conservation buffer, as the name suggests, conserving certain capital in the form of buffer that will be helpful for you at times of need. So beforehand only when you are doing good, you need to keep certain capital, okay, so that when a loss kind of a situation comes up where you are facing major losses, some crisis, then you can utilize that capital. That's a capital conservation buffer. Pehle hi thodi bot capital ala conserve karke rakho, taki loss ke time pe, crisis ke time pe aap unhe use kar zuko. That is capital conservation buffer. Now, moving ahead, why RBI is proposing these norms for all India financial institutions? See, Basel three requirements play a very important role in enhancing the resilience of our financial system. And these all India financial institutions are important part of this overall financial system. They are helping a lot in providing the credit to the necessary economic sectors. So their role has been increasing over time and thus there is a requirement to regulate them also like we are regulating the banks. So this Basel III requirement to enhance their regulation and make them more stronger in terms of having capital at times of need. Okay. Then the regulator has sought comments on this draft regulations by November. So, aapko, aap isme comments invited hai, based on whatever comments will come, whatever will be, the, will be the views of the public, they will finally take a decision on how and what to implement. Okay, now coming back to our question. They were asking about capital requirement including the capital conservation buffer. So capital ratio including capital conservation buffer is 11.5% of your risk weighted assets. So answer is option E. Moving ahead now to the second question. It says which of the following state owned undertaking has recently got RBI's approval to finance the infrastructure investment trusts. So recently there were these infrastructure investment trusts and the real estate investment trusts were in news. So what is, what is that uh, recent news piece? Let's discuss that then we'll come back to this question. So two things are there, there which I want to discuss but before that let's discuss what are REITs and these INVITs. What do you mean by the real estate investment trusts and the infrastructure investment trusts? These two terms are related to the related to news we will discuss. Kar the REITs stands for the Real Estate Investment Trust. So it's basically a company which is into your, inf uh, into your property business, your real estate business, which owns, operates or finances the real estate. So you all are aware about the concept of mutual funds. Mutual funds, we know that we have to invest in different money pool and in different assets and in different instruments. Mein invest kiya jata hai. Okay, so mutual funds collect the money pool, the money of investors and invest them in different assets, in different 
um, equity or uh, instruments or different securities basically so reits are kind of reits and these inwits are kind of mutual funds only but what is happening in case of real estate investment trust here the pooled money is invested in the real estate so it's invested in various immovable rent yielding properties but as far as the inwits are concerned which stands for the infrastructure investment trust there the pooled money is invested in different infrastructure projects and different infrastructure assets like highways power transmission assets or some other infrastructure units so jaise mutual fund mein paisa collect karke alag alag instruments mein invest kiya jata hai waise reits ke case mein पैसा जो रेस करते हैं पूल किया जाता है उसको रियल एस्टेट में प्रॉपर्टी बिजनेस में इन्वेस्ट करते हैं और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट के केस में पूल्ड मनी जो है वो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स में इन्वेस्ट किया जाता है ओके सो दे ऑपरेट लाइक म्यूचुअल फंड्स बट दे केटर टू अ पर्टिकुलर सेक्टर द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड द रियल एस्टेट सेक्टर रिस्पेक्टिवली नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस वॉट्स द रिसेंट न्यूज पीस फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमन इन द यूनियन बजट announced that the foreign portfolio investors can invest in these real estate and the infrastructure investment trust but the enabling was yet to take place so uh, budget mein ye kaha gaya tha ki foreign portfolio investors reits aur inwits mein invest kar sakte hain lekin usse related amendment jo lana tha hamare foreign exchange management regulations mein wo nahi laya gaya tha ki और वो lane ke baad hi ye cheez operational hoti now the rbi has taken the decision where this Ha, amendment has been made and now foreign portfolio investors can invest in these real estate and infrastructure investment trusts so reserve bank has allowed the foreign portfolio investors to invest in debt securities issued by these trusts so ye jo real estate or uh, infrastructure investment trusts hai ab ye paisa raise kar sakti hai foreign portfolio investors se to wo alag alag apne debt instruments issue karke paisa raise kar payengi foreign portfolio investors se wo yahan invest kar sakti hai इससे फायदा क्या होगा वॉट बेनिफिट विल दिस वेरी थिंग ब्रिंग सी वी नीड अ लॉट ऑफ डेवलपमेंट इन द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सेक्टर फॉर इंडिया इन द रियल एस्टेट सेक्टर नाउ वेन द फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स विल ऑल्सो बी इन्वेस्टिंग देन द पूल ऑफ मनी विच दिस वेरी सेक्टर विल हैव विल इंक्रीज द लिक्विडिटी विल इंक्रीज अब फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स भी रियल इस्टेट में इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में इन्वेस्ट कर पाएंगे तो इस सेक्टर को अब ज़्यादा फाइनेंसिंग मिलेगी ज़्यादा पैसा मिलेगा और ज्यादा ये प्रोजेक्ट्स अंडरटेक किए जा सकेंगे जिससे कि ये सेक्टर हमारा डेवलप होगा सो दैट्स द बेसिक बेनिफिट द मच नीडेड कैपिटल एंड लिक्विडिटी विच वाज नीडेड बाय दिस क्लास विल बी ब्रॉट इन व्हेन द फॉरेन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स एंटर ओके इट विल ओपन अप मोर फंड रेजिंग एवेन्यूज फॉर देम एंड इट विल बिकम मोर इजी टू एक्वायर एंड स्केल देयर पोर्टफोलियो अब ज्यादा पैसा रेज कर पाएंगे तो ज्यादा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर और रियल एस्टेट प्रोजेक्ट्स में इन्वेस्ट कर पाएंगे उस पैसे को it will help expand and diversify the capital pool and further reduce the cost of capital for asset class so in ke liye aur zyada investors ho gaya zyada bada ho gaya pool of attracting the investors the pool of attracting more investors increases more capital can be raised at a lower cost so these are few benefits which this decision of rbi is going to bring in then one more thing which i wanted to discuss this firm called the india infrastructure finance company limited it has got the rbi approval that it can now finance the infrastructure investment trust so it can start up with the infrastructure investment trust where the money will be pooled and invested in different infrastructure projects ye state agency long term financial assistance offer karegi infrastructure projects ko paisa raise karke basically trust operate karegi paisa raise karke usko infrastructure projects pe lagayegi rbi ka approval mil gaya hai rbi has given the approval so the question was asking about this only that which firm has got which state owned undertaking has got this approval so it's option b india infrastructure finance company limited iifcl moving to the next question now the question says that who has been appointed as the first chairman as the first chairman of the newly constituted development finance institution National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development. So recently, in the, this very year only, this institution has been set up, and now the first chairman has been appointed. So we have to identify who has been appointed as the new chairman. So let's discuss a bit about this very institution. What is it all about? See, uh, recently a bill was passed in the month of March. 
the bill called national bank for financing infrastructure and development bill was passed it was introduced and it was cleared and what did that bill focused on it focused on establishment of a development finance institution which development finance institution nbfid the national bank for financing infrastructure and development so if i talk about development financial institutions what are these development financial institutions kya hoti hain as the name suggests development financial institutions so they offer the financing facilities to different segments and ensure the development of that very sector to so, ye basically financing facilities offer karti hai alag alag sectors ko unke development mein they are set up to provide long term finance for such segments of economy where risks involved are beyond acceptable limits of commercial banks and other ordinary financial institutions so suppose there is a infrastructure sector now it needs a lot of development and for that it needs a lot of financing if the financing is funds are raised from the commercial banks or the financial institutions the funds might not be enough and the level of risks involved in those projects are quite high so it's necessary to set up separate institutions which will particularly cater to the need of that segment like infrastructure in this case it will provide the financing it will not deal with the public with respect to accepting and uh, accepting their deposit but it will source the funds from various sources and provide the funding to the necessary segments helping in their development this is what is the objective so development financial institution government say market say alag alag sources se alag alag institution se paisa raise karti hai aur wo paisa jo hai kisi particular segment jiske liye wo institution bani hai wahan lagati hai unhe long term के लिए फाइनेंस लैंड किया जाता है ताकि उस सेक्टर की डेवलपमेंट हो सके ये इंस्टीट्यूशंस लोगों को लोगों की डिपॉजिट्स एक्सेप्ट नहीं करती क्योंकि जिन प्रोजेक्ट्स को ये फंड कर रही है वहाँ ही ऑलरेडी इतनी ज़्यादा रिस्क इन्वॉल्व है तो जब बैंक्स और फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन इनफ नहीं होते उन रिस्क को डील करने के लिए इतना ज़्यादा फाइनेंस प्रोवाइड करने के लिए तो अलग इनसे इंस्टीट्यूशन की जरूरत पड़ती है नाउ द इंस्टीट्यूशन हैज़ बीन सेटअप टू केटर टू विच सेगमेंट टू द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सेगमेंट टू सो प्रोवाइडिंग द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फाइनेंसिंग इज द मेजर ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट हैज बीन सेटअप so it will uh, cater to two kinds of objectives the financial objectives as well as the development objectives as far as the financial objectives are concerned this national bank of financing infrastructure and development will be directly or indirectly involved in lending investing or attracting investments for infrastructure projects in india so iske naam se hi pata chal raha hai ye national bank hai जो फाइनेंस करेगा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स को एंड डेवलपमेंट इंश्योर करेगा राइट सो फाइनेंशियल ऑब्जेक्टिव्स की जहाँ तक बात आती है ये इंडिया में होने वाले अलग अलग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स में इन्वेस्ट करेगा उसमें और इन्वेस्टमेंट्स अट्रैक्ट करेगा और पैसा उन एरियाज में लैंड करेगा सो फाइनेंशियल ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू लैंड इन्वेस्ट एंड अट्रैक्ट मोर इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इन दी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स विच आर टेकिंग प्लेस इन इंडिया एज फर एज द डेवलपमेंट ऑब्जेक्टिव आर कंसर्न this very institution will ensure the development of the market of bonds loans derivatives for infrastructure financing now infrastructure projects can be financed through different sources through bonds through loans through derivatives so developing those markets so that it becomes easier for the infrastructure sector to raise funds is another objective paisa khud bhi ye provide karenge lekin ye un markets ko bhi develop karenge jisse ki infrastructure सेक्टर को पैसा रेस करना इजी हो जाता है थ्रू बॉन्ड्स डेरिवेटिव्स लोन्स एंड ऑल सो दिस इज व्हाई दिस इंस्टीट्यूशन हैज बीन सेट अप नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट हु हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज द फर्स्ट चेयरमैन मार्च में ही ये बिल पास हुआ था ये फॉर्म ये इंस्टीट्यूशन बनी है नई नई इंस्टीट्यूशन है अब इसके फर्स्ट चेयरमैन को भी अपॉइंट किया गया है द फर्स्ट चेयरमैन इज मिस्टर के वी ही इज द वेटरन बैंकर हु हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज द चेयरमैन so answer to this question is option d kv kamath this was all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much